And it hasn't blue eyes. Well, uh, that stick is priced at three pounds. Three pounds? Fifteen dollars for an old stick? Well, that's a very rare piece. It shows the wolf in the pentagram, the sign of the werewolf. Werewolf? What's that? Well, that's a human being who at certain times of the year changes into a wolf. You mean runs around on all fours and bites and snaps and bays at the moon? Oh, even worse than that sometimes. Yeah, like sometimes it'll send you text messages, but his paws are clumsy and the autocorrect changes his messages so they're obscene. Wash your mouth out. He's dirty. Never mind. Listen, I'm happy to have my friend Rick Goldschmidt here with me. He's an author and an expert on all those Rankin Bass productions that we've all loved for so many years. And since this is the Wolfman movie, you brought something special with you, didn't you? Oh, yeah. I brought the Wolfman. <laughs> Yeah, this is an unusual figure. I've never seen one like that, and it's very impressive. And not only that, you're brought with a lot of these great figures from the Rankin Bass Productions. Uh, tell us a little bit about this Boris Karloff here. Uh, that's a mask from Trick or Treat Studios, and it just came out for this Halloween season. Oh, that's amazing. I, I love the resemblance. And Boris was involved as You told me you have his actual contract for, right. the, for doing the Mad Monster Party. How much did he get paid for that? Uh, 3500 for two days' work. Two days' work? Well, and you, you said that there's nothing in the contract about the licensing of his actual image? Right, right. And uh, he did his work in 65, and the movie came out in, like, 68. Um, it was called Monster Convention to uh -huh. begin with, and then it became the Monster Movie. And when Harvey Kurtzman and Jack Davis from Mad Magazine got involved, it became Mad Monster Party. Yeah, and that, that we'd love to show that. We've been talking about how we've been trying to get the actual movie to show on our show, but it's hard to get the rights. But I hope that someday we would be able to. Uh, sure. And uh, you have to tell us about this. <laughs> this is a very unusual item here. And just tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, Rick. during the making of the movie, the Animagic puppet technicians in Japan made Arthur Rankin a salad fork and spoon set. And he gave it to me about 10 years ago at Thanksgiving. Wow, that's so impressive. It, it's so nice that you've had the relationship with them. You know, we've had the uh, King Kong movies that they made, the live action oh, ones yeah. on here. And I noticed you brought some of the King Kong <laughs> figures along with you here. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the fact that in the Mad Monster Party, they couldn't call King Kong King Kong? Yeah, they actually call King Kong it in the Mad Monster Party feature film. I think that was a, a rights issue. I think they only got the rights from RKO for the cartoon series, and then it translated into the King Kong Escapes film. And uh, Joseph E. Levine produced Mad Monster Party, and he was kind of known for uh, not having a big budget for his <laughs> movies. <laughs> well, I know everybody loves the, the stop action stuff, and that includes the old Rudolph shows and everything else. And I'm really pleased that you brought these here to show us all these great figures. And I understand you have a, a book signing coming up in suburban Chicago, and I'll post information about that on my blog. Rick Goldschmidt, thank you so much for showing up here. Happy Thanks to have you here, and thank you for bringing along the Wolfman. <laughs>